Oh, hi everyone! I'm about to go and collect a PlayStation 2 and you're coming with me. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You're coming with me. And... -ah! Here we go. This is in surprisingly good condition. There's no scratches anywhere. They've got the expansion bay cover in. I lost that in my childhood one. So why do I buy a PlayStation 2? Don't already have one? Haven't I shown off a variety of PlayStation 2 games on this channel? Yeah, I have. But I need a big fat PS2. When I was a kid, I had one of these, but unfortunately my childhood home was broken into and they stole my fat PS2. And my replacement was a PS2 Slim, so I unfortunately don't have one of these on person anymore. Well, until now, I guess. And another reason I bought one is because we're doing all of this from scratch. I am buying a brand new PlayStation 2 and a bunch of accessories to basically make the ultimate system. So I got this for £10 on Facebook Marketplace. And of course, you can pay more than that on eBay and in used game stores. But if you look around, you can get PlayStation 2s ridiculously cheap. And not only is this one in really good condition, but it comes with an 8 megabyte memory card, an official one. And also... Let me go and get this from the floor. An official PlayStation 2 DualShock controller. And this is also in great condition. I think the seller just did a great job cleaning this, which is nice because a lot of sellers do not clean their controllers. So thank you to that one. Oh, and one other thing this came with was a PS2 to HDMI adapter. Now, of course, you can use composite or component or SCART, but I think I'll be using this. Pretty nifty little thing. So we've got the fat PS2 console. But let's break this thing open. Let's put homebrew on this. And this is very, very simple. There's no mod chips needed, no hacking knowledge. All you need are three things. Most importantly, you need one of these, a free MC boot memory card. And it basically looks like this, a regular PS2 memory card. But when you put it in a slot, either the first or the second, and turn on the system, it will come up with a bunch of new options that aren't usually there. This basically homebrews your PS2 just by being in the memory card slot. It's awesome. I did go for a 32 megabyte one here, but that's not necessary, just go for an eight megabyte one. In fact, they cost around, let's see, around eight pounds. So this and the PS2 itself brings us to a total of 18 pounds so far. This will work on any PS2, regardless if it's the fat one or the slim one. But the reason I wanted a fat one was for the expansion bay, because I need one of these. This is a PS2 network adapter and it cost me 14 pounds. And this basically goes in the expansion bay. We take away the little dummy plastic bit and replace it with one of these. And the reason we need one of these is because we also need one of these. This will fit right in here, right? That's the wrong way around. Let's do that again. This will fit right in here. So it basically allows the hard drive to connect to the expansion bay and slot straight into the PS2, giving our PS2 a hard drive. And this works with pretty much any 3.5 inch drive. I've got a 500 gigabyte one here. And I'm going to fill this thing with PlayStation 2 games, to the brim. This adapter costs £14, and I had the hard drive just lying around, there's no sense just wasting money. But a very similar one costs around £18. So we're at a grand total of £50, or $57. So for less than a brand new game, we can assemble the ultimate PS2. But what do I mean by that? Why is this the ultimate system? Well, let's go and have a look. But before we do, this video is sponsored by HelloFresh. For many of us, September means back to school, whether you're a student or have kids. Places to go, assignments to do, just a whole host of extra responsibilities. No one needs that extra stress, and while HelloFresh can't help with homework, it can provide a quick, easy to create meal customized entirely to you. Trust me when I say it is a lifesaver when there's just no time to meal plan. Not only does it allow you to skip the grocery store, but the HelloFresh market can provide a one-stop shop for every meal with quick breakfasts, lunches, and snacks in addition to their usual dinner selection. And thanks to Hello Custom, it's possible to customize your boxes by swapping out the proteins, adding a protein to a veggie meal, or upgrading to a more luxurious meal. It can absolutely be tailored to your tastes. But what about the kids? You may enjoy the new Mediterranean recipes on offer, but picky eaters could be less excited about that. Not to worry though, as HelloFresh also has a line of kid-friendly recipes guaranteed to delight any child as they dive into the new school year. Best of all, each meal comes with a foolproof, step-by-step -step recipe that can make most meals ready in 30 minutes or less. I've used HelloFresh for a long time now and still enjoy the satisfaction of making a new recipe. It's made me actually enjoy cooking. If you want to try it for
for yourself, be sure to use my link or go to HelloFresh.com and use the code POGGVGSEPT16 for 16 free meals across 7 boxes, plus 3 surprise gifts. Once you click, my description will live update to count up the purchases. Now enjoy the video and just think, you could be watching this while cooking up a delicious meal from HelloFresh. As someone with a fairly sizable PS2 collection, I live in fear of disc rot. I've had a few discs fail on me in the past, like Sega Superstars over here, and this is thankfully a fairly cheap game, so buying a replacement wasn't a big deal. But if a game like Persona 3 Fez failed for some reason, I don't think I can just buy another one, that's a really expensive game. So I want to back up all of my collection, make sure they're protected, and I guess more importantly, very easily accessible. I can bring my PS2 to a friend's house and have 150 games on my hard drive without bringing along 150 discs. Well, that's awesome! And let me show you just how easy this is. So to get games on this, there's two things you can do. You can buy a docking station, but that's more money. So what I'm doing is putting this straight into my PC as an internal drive. That may sound intimidating to those who have never touched the insides of their PC, but it really is so simple. You just put it in, you connect it, and that's it. If you're not comfortable with that, then by all means, buy the docking station. Don't risk your anxiety on just getting games on a PS2. But this really isn't that tricky for those who want to give it a go. Alright, cool! Our hard drive's in our computer, and there's two things we've got to download that are in the description below. There's the OPL Manager and the WinHeap. WinHeap basically allows us to put stuff on the hard drive, whereas OPR Manager lets us sort of manage the games that we have. And this right here is Everybody's Golf. Uh, that's just the game that I ripped to demonstrate how to do this. So first and foremost, let's make this hard drive a PS2 hard drive. There's a difference between a Windows hard drive and a PS2 formatted hard drive. So unfortunately, once this is in our PC, we can't access it like a regular hard drive. This is only accessible through WinHeap. So let's open this thing up, run this as administrator, and we are going to format this thing. So this one's already formatted, but let's do it again. So let's just go to Format Drive, and make sure the application's on 48-bit, and then just press Yes and OK. And it's going to quickly erase everything on that drive and make it so it's a PS2 hard drive. And so now, when we put this thing in our console, the console is going to be like, Ah, oh, yes, this is PS2, I recognize it. But we don't have games. We've got to put games on this thing, and we'll do that in just a little bit. Cool, that's done. Now we're going to close this for now, and we are going to make a new folder, and we're going to call this OPL, in all caps. Doesn't matter what you call it really, but OPL, that's fine. Now, we ignore that for now, we'll come back to this. We're going to open the OPL manager and run this as administrator. Right now, there should be an error. It should say there's no CD or DVD or art folder. That's fine, we're going to make that. We're going to say, yeah. We're going to go to settings, we are going to go to change mode OPL folder. I'm going to set the path as the OPL, the one on the desktop, which is this one right here. And once we do that, we'll press save. And if we open up our OPL folder, there should be a bunch of folders we didn't make, like apps, art, CD, CFG, CHT, DVD, pops, and VMC. DVD is the important one. This is where your games go. So I'm going to drag my everybody's golf game in to the DVD folder. And that is almost ready to go. So before we put that on the hard drive, let's go back to the OPL manager run as administrator, and it's going to recognize that we have a game, but it's saying it's bad. But we can fix that really easily, so let's click on the game which is in the bad ISO section, press try update file name, and that is now a good, that's now a healthy ISO that's ready to go on the PS2 drive. So let's quickly do that. So one final time, let's go back to WinHeap, run as administrator, and we're going to press select drive, make sure it's your PS2 and not your PC, don't want to accidentally put anything on your PC drive. So that's the PS2 drive, add images, which means add games, add images there, and it should take you to your OPL DVD folder with Everybody's Golf. Now we can press start, and go! And that's going to put Everybody's Golf onto the drive, and then when that drive goes into our PS2, we can now play Everybody's Golf from the hard drive. I will show you two more things you can do before we do that though, because I don't like this name right here. So if we click on this, and press edit image, we can get rid of all these numbers. So basically when it shows up on your PS2, it won't say S number number number, it'll just say everybody's golf. And that's now ready to go back on your PS2. And one other thing you can do, this is optional, you don't have to do this, but if you go to the OPL manager, run as administrator, 
and then press batch actions, you can download a cover art and disc art for the game. Now unfortunately this can't go on your hard drive, you'll need to put this on a USB drive and then copy it over to your hard drive from the PS2 so there's more steps in there. But basically it'll make everything look very presentable and elegant when you do. We've got everything ready now, so let's just go ahead and demonstrate what exactly all of this does. Let's first turn on the PS2 as normal with no special memory card, and as you can see it's just browser and system configuration, this is very very normal. But the moment we put in this memory card, not even the hard drive, just the memory card, and BAM, you've got a bunch of new options. But we do want the hard drive, so let's just slot this in, and you can turn these little screws a tiny bit, it doesn't really matter how tight it is as long as the connection's in there. So allow me to give you a tour of everything we've done. These two are the default PS2 options, they're no different to what they usually are, but you should have a bunch of other ones too. It depends on the size of your memory card, not every single one will have all of these, but pretty much all of them do have the OPL loader, which is the important one because that's where all your games go. There's also a few others that may interest you, like you can get cheat loaders in here, or GSM can change the resolution of games, but that can be a bit buggy. But yeah, let's just go onto the main one, the OPL loader. So let's press this. It may change resolution every now and then, so you could lose signal depending on what kind of connection you have. But as you will see in just a sec, it is now booting up the hard drive. Now the hard drive does make a little bit of noise. I wouldn't say it's any louder than a disk drive. It depends on the hard drive, I suppose. But here we go! There's a bunch of things we can do here. We can go into the settings and change a bunch of stuff if we want to, but let's not touch any of that for now. I want to show you the games. And I may have added a bit more than everybody's golf. So these are all the games that I have. And I went for a 500 gig hard drive, but not all of my collection actually fits on here. I probably should have gone for one, a one terabyte drive. So my advice is if you've got more than 150 games, probably go bigger than 500 gigs. That said though, the vast majority of what I want is on here. And you forget just how good the PlayStation 2 library is until you see it all in front of you. Like, I know it's the best-selling console of all time, but it is so good. It's so good. Like, you can walk into any store and just come out with Flipnik, which is a banger of a pinball game, or Guitaru Man. There's so much good stuff. Let me just, let me just go through all of it. And because I've also put the images on, if I stay on a game for, like, a second, it will load the box art and the disc. And it's cool with the discs as well. Let's go, let's go to a two-disc game, like, uh... None of the ones on this page. Let's see... Uh, here we go, Space Channel 5! So Space Channel 5 has two discs, one of them's part one, one of them's part two, and the disc actually changes on the left over there, which is very neat. But yeah, I've, I've basically stuffed all of the essentials that I believe um, everyone should play on PS2. And it's nuts, how many systems can you say have over 150 essentials? But really, I, I can't really see the system without any of these games. Especially not The Simpsons Road Rage. Um, <laughs> let's just put up a game though and show you how simple it is and how fast it is. Uh, let's go ahead and do... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. What, what's a good game to demonstrate? Let's do... Rayman 2 Revolution. Also, a great thing about being a PAL gamer too is I have multiple PS2s for different regions. One of them's American, one of them's European. But with this hard drive, I can load any game, whether it's from Japan, whether it's from Europe, I can load them onto my PAL PS2. It, it disregards all region, it doesn't matter anymore. And that also means I can play 60Hz games, that are usually 50Hz, on my PAL PS2. Which is a game changer for everyone in Europe. But here we go, yeah, we're playing Rayman 2 right now. How sweet! This really unlocks the potential of the PlayStation 2. It doesn't just secure and future-proof and protect all your games, but allows you to broaden your horizons and play games that you can't otherwise play, like Japanese games. Not only Japanese games, but fan translations. Games like Namco Cross Capcom didn't release in the West, but fans translated it, and you can play those translations on a real PS2. Same goes for the 3D remake of Dragon Quest V, which is totally different to the DS version. This is a crazy game. The battles are full 3D, the overworld is full 3D. It's nuts! This game never came to us, but we can finally play it here in the West. There's also games that I've always been curious about, like Puyo Puyo Fever 2. This is giving the PlayStation 2 another life for me, and I am thrilled for that. It also makes it so load times are a bit faster too. We've got the hard drive GTA 3 on the left, and then the disc GTA 3 on the right. And as you can see, the hard drive does load it faster. 
And again, because I'm in Europe, many games are 50 hertz, and that blows. But with this, I can disregard all of my LAN's versions and go straight for an American copy, which is 60 hertz. That changes so much! More than anything though, this is just an amazing way to experience the PlayStation 2. It really is one of the best systems of all time. And I know people say like, oh, all the best games have already been HD remastered. That is just not true. <laughs> there are so many incredible games that are still exclusive to the PS2. It's such a vast library full of so many gems, and even some of the less obscure ones, like Ape Escape. Like yeah, Ape Escape 2 may have a version on PlayStation 4 and PS5, but it's an inferior version. This PS2 one's far more stable, and then games like Ape Escape 3 have not been ported anywhere. This is still exclusive to PS2. PlayStation 2's got a game for everyone, whether it's RPGs, or platformers, or puzzle games, or racers, or action games, whatever you want, it's got it. If I had to bring any system with me into a locked room where I could never leave, it would absolutely be this. And with this hard drive modification, I can live in my isolated room and never have to move to put a disc in. I may die of starvation, but I will never be starved of Shadow of the Colossus, which matters more to you. Thank you for watching everyone, I know this is quite a different video to usual, but it's something I've wanted to do for a while, so I thought why not bring you all on this journey. Anyway, there's a lot of fun stuff coming, so please stay tuned, and I will see you next time!